Hi everybody, welcome back to VMware Explore 2023. I almost said VMworld again. VMware Explore 2023. My name is Dave Vellante, and we are live with Sarbjeet Johal. I call him a cube analyst because he's like part of the family, but he's the principal and founder at StackPain. Great to see you, my friend. Thanks for coming on. Good to see you, Dave. Sarbjeet, I got to start with the big picture. You know, every 10 or 15 years or so, this industry goes through a platform shift. I mean, it hasn't been through a real silicon platform shift in the enterprise in a, in a long time, but it's, it's happening. Help us understand, squint through what's going on in the industry. What, what do you make of this platform shift? How would you describe it? How should we think about it? Yeah, as we just talked briefly about just before the, we started rolling the cameras on, I, I think that there's a big, huge shift happening, and we, when we are in it, we don't tend to see it. But if you zoom out, or see it from outside, the x86 platform is being challenged, uh, mainly due to the AI developments, generative AI, and on top of that, even before generative AI came into picture, we have been sort of focusing on TPUs and putting more processing in the NIC cards, most, more processing in the storage arrays, right? We had that you know, IBM discussion that day. So we need more intelligence at network level, more intelligence at storage level, of course, more intelligence at the compute level. And anywhere you need intelligence, where's the camera, that one? <laughs> anywhere you need <laughs> intelligence, you need compute there, right? That's the, that's the fact, and that's what, what's happening and new chips are emerging for, which are very specific, specific to the workload. Of course, NVIDIA has done a great job of pitching and architecting their software solutions, their platform for developers to take advantage of the specialized workloads for specialized chips sort of concept, right? So the multi-cloud world is turning into a multi-chip world almost. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. So it, when it comes to silicon, something that David Floyer taught me decades ago, was the economics of silicon are a function of volume. Yeah. It's, it's Wright's law, which roughly stated, we all know Moore's law, Wright's law roughly stated, says if, when you double the cumulative volume of your, your, your output, you cut your cost by a constant, which in semiconductors is probably like 15%, and then you combine that with Moore's law and with doubling in transistors, you get the economics you know, really favor you if you have the volume. And as we've talked about, I mean, we published years ago, you know, the, the ARM scenario, the NVIDIA scenario, you had a podcast with Crawford Del Pret, the, the CEO of IDC well, and myself. That, yeah. And we were talking about at the time, the combinatorial factors of the CPU, the GPU, the NPU, the accelerators, all the communications, you know, technologies in between that like Broadcom makes, it, it, what you were just referring to, and that price performance curve blows away the historical Moore's Law. And that's why the x86, which has done everything, it's done the core processing, it does the memory management, it does all the storage offloads, the networking offloads, does it all. Yeah. And that was the wonderful gift of x86, it was this wonderful general purpose processor that could do everything well, to your point, now it's all specialized. What does that mean for VMware in the context of AI? Yeah, just before we go there with, with VMware, I think there's some nuance there. Like earlier hardware x86, x86, we had this flat thing and then we have this machine code and assembly and all, like, and then you compile code, it's faster and then Interpreters, that's how interpreters or interpreter-based languages, right? So they were slower, but then the languages matter. How close you are to the machine matters. Power consumption matters, right? But most importantly, the speed matters, right? Speed is a new scale, you know, that's new uh, slogan. So because speed matters, that software which sits between silicon and the programmers, that matters a lot. And, and CUDA from, yeah. um, from NVIDIA. NVIDIA 
and AMD is trying to go open source on their side to compete with CUDA, right? CUDA is their own thing, right? I think software and, and hardware combination is much stronger, not just the hardware. So I think that your comment about the volume, yes, volume is very important with chips, but with that, the software, if you put the software with it, your margins will be more than 15%. Having said that, recently CNBC folks actually, some of them do great, great job actually, some of them are just reading the news. So they- <laughs> That is so true. <laughs> so, I have a lot of respect for many of the reporters. Yeah, some are good actually, and, John and, Ford and a yeah, few others. So really they good. put, uh, somebody pulled up the chart, like numbers speak for themselves, right? So when, there's this 20 year long sort of chart. In the beginning of the wave, any computing change, the hardware people benefit more. And their stocks were going up, up like crazy. Intel was way up and all that stuff. And then they start going down and when software picks up that hardware and uses that like very creatively, that, the hard, that hardware, that, that segment of, uh, or that family of hardware becomes like Kind of commoditizes. Blah, blah, yeah. right? right? So, it, till next big thing comes. So, I think NVIDIA will do great for next few quarters and maybe a couple of years, but then the, 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 the silicon will take sort of backstage. This is what, what my like, reading is. Coming back to VMware, I think VMware is going to a chip company, right? So, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. And actually, that, yesterday I said that in the QA. Yeah. So, I think that they will benefit from it overall because most of the enterprises are trying to make sense of AI. They want to bring the AI in-house. They need standardization. And there are only two pure software vendors in our, our world, which is Red Hat and VMware. VMware is much more pervasive in enterprise. We talked about that many times, like just like Microsoft Almost every enterprise has VMware of one flavor or other. You know, some people spend more money and some people less. Uh, so they will, I think they will benefit. They will gain more share if they can pull off the hardware leverage, actually, if they can pull it off. So one of the, the a, a fundamental premise that Broadcom has put forth to the regulators, which here's a, all systems are go here. There are a couple of, I guess, countries in Asia or regulators in Asia that Asian countries still have to approve. Uh, but I guess, well, so the UK Competition Markets uh, Committee approved. They gave formal approval. Yeah. And I guess, I didn't fully understand this on, when I was flying out, but <clears throat> and when we wrote our last breaking analysis, I was kind of hammering the FTC, dragging their feet. Well, they just chose not to respond. So the, the statute of limitations expired when they could respond. So effectively, that means the U.S. approved it. Uh, so they approved it by, n by, not, by not saying, saying anything. anything. Uh, which is, a, you know, kind of a typical... Lena Khan is busy, and her team. They, they are underfunded. Yeah. You give her yeah. that excuse, are you? Yes. It's yeah. all about economics, guys, who are always listening. At the end of the day, it's economics. Economics rules. I think Lena Khan's a little too busy, but anyway. Our budget is very small. Yeah. Yeah. Good, it'd be dangerous with a bigger budget, even more dangerous with a bigger <laughs> budget, but we'll leave that for the cube part. Yes. <laughs> um, but, but the premise is that by Broadcom owning VMware, it will create even more competition, not less. And then there's this I, stuff believe... about fiber channel cards or some other stuff that is minor factor that Broadcom's agreed, no problem, we'll take care of that. Um, and Broadcom sells to NVIDIA, <laughs> they're a big customer, so I, I just don't see that as a, an issue. The, the broader issue, the macro, is a fourth cloud, which VMware is that fourth cloud, and when you look at the overlap, in terms of penetration, VMware cloud is highly penetrated, as is AWS and Azure. However, all three big clouds do their own silicon, they all have ARM-based designs. You have Nitro, Amazon's Nitro, which is their smart NIC yes. and virtualization platform, which enables Graviton, which is an ARM-based chip, and Tranium, and you know, all the 
uh, Inferentia and all the new AI chips, those are all custom built silicon. They're based on ARM. They're built by TSMC, I believe. At, again, the volume advantage. VMware doesn't have, they have an equivalent essentially called Project Monterey, which we haven't heard much about. And so the economics are going to be somewhat challenged. It'll be interesting to see how Broadcom deals with that. Uh, but notwithstanding that, I think it's very clear that VMware is a viable fourth cloud. Do you buy that premise? I, I, I do, actually. I, I think the combination of VMware and a chip company, I think it's a long shot, but I think they will pick some ARM designs and start building their own chips. They may do that, I'm not sure. Broadcom. No, Broadcom with VMware, right? Yeah, right. So Broadcom can sell it to others too, like not only just, just VMware, right? So the problem with the VMware is that they don't have their own public cloud, right? So they give it to you to put in, in your data center, right? So they're pure software stack, if you will. So how close it can come to chips? It's, uh, it can if Broadcom wants it to be. I think it, they can do that. Project Monterey, um, I think it's under re-evaluation. Uh, that's what my read is. Uh, from yeah, UNA. It hasn't got the traction that they had hoped. Yeah, I mean, but I think now it may, with Broadcom. Say again? Now with Broadcom, it may get that traction because Broadcom is a hardware chips company, right? So. Yeah, I think part of the issue is the value proposition of Graviton and Nitro is going to save money. Yeah. Right? Amazon makes a big deal about that. And, and because it's multi-tenant, you've got you know, massive scale, yeah. you've got pretty high utilization. So a, a small improvement in, in price performance is, is going to make a big deal. In the data center, your utilization is a lot lower. So it, it may not have an, as much of an across the board impact. Yeah, I think there's an optics as well. Like there's a reality in optics, you know? So, even, even Amazon had to come out and say, hey, we have NVIDIA chips and we have instances like New York uh, Summit. Yeah. They had to say that, right? Even though they have Inferentia chips, right? And the, 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 their model training chips, right? So, um, Graviton and Inferentia both, they have it, but still they had to mention that. So, I think optics matter a lot reality, of course, we know on-prem utilization of hardware is always very low, we know that. But, but just if you compare just both worlds, right? If here your cloud providers are running at 80% capacity, just to match, like, they never published that record, by the way. So they are running at 80% capacity on CPU and in data center or storage or rack, you know, whatever infrastructure they need. On, in data center, you are in the tens or twenty percent, you know, on storage or, or, or CPUs, right? Many times, right? So, but even if you improve that, in that, it, even in that, it, the, if the price goes down, it's, you're still better. But I think that it, the, the, coming back to the, the software stack, I think the game ends there, because if you don't have the programmability of your chips, so between the programming language and the chips, is there's a there's a platform which is really much needed. Um, buffer, it's a shock absorber for new stack, if you will. That, well, that you have to have, and VMware doesn't have that, but, you, but they can go open source. But to your earlier point, I mean, NVIDIA made those investments years ago. Yeah. Wall Street hated it. Now, that was the time everybody should have bought, but they made the bet, but <laughs> a lot of people didn't. And, uh, or when we published our NVIDIA's gonna own the data center because of AI two years ago with David Floyer, the, I think the valuation was in the 300 billion. Now it's about over a trillion. But um, all right, multi-cloud, big strategy. So really, three big themes: Broadcom, multi-cloud, and AI. Yeah. Um, multi-cloud enabled by Tanzu. Uh, they're they're blending or bringing Aria into the Tanzu umbrella, trying to simplify that. Still, um, not the traction that they want in the market. Right, OpenShift is dominant yes. in, in that space. Do they have to be vertically integrated there? Do they have to have their own 
application development stack, or should they go all open source? I mean, they're obviously going for it. I think mix. I think mix is better. I had a, a discussion with Betty Junod. Um, she is their chief sort of marketing uh, officer on that side, or she's very technical. Um, it, it's very um, configurable, or it, it's like modular approach to to Tanzu. So you can mix the third-party uh, plugins mm -hmm. with VMware provided, you know, base plugins, if you will. So it's expandable. It community can participate. Partners can participate in it. And there's a lot of tool chains, you know, you know Git and all this, you know, DevOps kind of tool chain can plug into it. So there are ways to plug it into this SDLC, Software Development Lifecycle Management sort of stack. So it's, it's a VMware shift to left, you know, to, towards developers. I think it's a, it, again, it's one of those things, it's optics, number one. Number two is that if you're not building on it, then how will you operate on it, right? So if, you, if you're building in cloud, most probably you will operate in public cloud, if you're building in public cloud. So the lot of development in, I was talking to somebody here um, earlier, just a few minutes back, a, an insurance company, they, they have nothing in cloud, nothing other than SaaS they use. None of their really? applications. No yeah. public cloud infrastructure, yeah. no IaaS. No. I was like, yeah, there, there are so many companies in mid-market, mid to lower end, you can say, or, okay, by the way. Why, I, Why what was their rationale? It's cost? It's cost, it's the, they don't, Concern? their staff is old and they, they Inertia? Their, ten, their tenure is like uh, employee tenure in the Midwest or like in the middle of America. As people stay at a company for 20, 25 years, uh, they don't learn new stuff. I mean, sorry to say that, but they're, it's, there are a lot of factors, economics, uh, wow. You think they don't, they really, they, they, they don't have any cloud, like no that's what, shadow that's cloud? What he told me, he's you, there for many years. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, I was shocked. All right, let's hit on AI. Um, you saw the private AI. I don't know if you saw the the uh, uh, power law that we yeah. we did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Right? Yeah. So the vertical axis is size of model, you know, open AI, Llama, right, uh, the Titan, yeah, right, uh, Bard, okay, <laughs> that's on the vertical axis. Horizontal axis is uh, domain specificity, so a long tail. Yeah. And you gotta get the torso getting pulled in by open source. They, VMware announced private AI, betting on the NVIDIA stack. They're talking hugging face, everybody's using hugging face. They've got, they brought out their general counsel. Yeah, <laughs> that was clever. For the, for the FUD, it's good, but there's legitimacy there. Yeah. What are their prospects, what do they have to do to succeed in your view? I think there are two things, like when it comes to VMware and generative AI. So one is giving you, as an enterprise, facility, so you can have access to GPUs and or the software stack to cook your own models or your private models or augment the large language models, augmentation of that. I, I'll just use that term. There are so many terms being used, right? So, like, you're trying to tame the AI or you're trying to infuse your data into that so it doesn't go back, but you, you have yours, right? So that's one thing. Like, give you platform, infrastructure and platform, so as an enterprise, so you can build whatever you need to. The other one is that VMware itself, for its ops, because VMware has a lot of software, right? Yep. Uh, you know, so vCloud Tractor and all these like, soft infrastructure as software, right? Um, as code, you can say. So a CLI, there's a lot of CLI, SDKs, right? So they have cooked up a model, hugging face model, in that context. So they are making the practitioners of VMware productive. That's one thing. Like that's the creation part. When you are a VMware shop, you know? So your people who practice it, they can become productive. But on the ops side, you will, they are giving you facility to own GPU as a service as well. So Abjit, I could go on, I gotta go. All right. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, great to have you as always, awesome an analysis. And I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. All right, man.
Okay, keep it right there. Dave Vellante, John Furrier, Lisa Martin, and Rob Strecce, live from VMware Explore 2023, formerly known as VMworld. You're watching theCUBE. We're right back right after this short break. Thank you.